The future of drone warfare is here, and it's smaller, faster, and smarter than ever before. The U.S. Army has just picked its newest weapon to fight back against the swarm, a low-cost, high-performance missile designed to shoot down enemy drones before they ever reach the front lines. It's called the Freedom Eagle One, and it could redefine how America handles the growing drone threat around the world. Earlier today, Aero Verniak announced that its Freedom Eagle One, or FE-1, has been chosen as the Army's next-generation counter-drone interceptor. This missile isn't just another small defense project. It's part of a sweeping effort to close one of the U.S. military's most critical gaps, short-range air defense. The Army awarded Aero Vernian a $95.9 million contract to supply FE-1s through a program known as the Long Range Kinetic Interceptor Initiative, or LRKI, a key element of the broader Next Generation Counter Unused Aerial System Missile, or NGCM. To understand why this matters, you have to look at what's happening in modern warfare. Across Ukraine, the Middle East, and beyond, drones like Iran's Shahed-136 have proven that even cheap, low-tech aircraft can cause enormous damage. These one-way attack drones are fast, persistent, and inexpensive, and they're changing how militaries around the world think about air defense. Until now, the Army's main counter-drone system relied heavily on Raytheon's Coyote Interceptor, a proven design already deployed as part of the Low, Slow, Unmanned Aircraft Integrated Defeat System, or LIDS. Aero Vernian's FE-1, however, represents the next evolution. Measuring between 5 and 6 feet in length with a 6-inch diameter, this compact interceptor first flew only in January of this year. Its fast-track development dates back to 2023 initially started by a smaller defense firm called Blue Hollow, which Aerovernient later acquired in 2024. According to Aerovernient, the Freedom Eagle One delivers low-cost, high-performance lethality against so-called Group 2 and Group 3 drones, categories that include drones weighing from 21 to 1,320 pounds, flying at altitudes up to 18,000 feet, and moving at speeds up to 250 knots. And while it's optimized for these mid-tier threats, FE-1 still retains residual capability to engage Group 1 drones, as well as fixed-wing and rotary aircraft, and even subsonic cruise missiles under the right conditions. The key here is affordability and adaptability. The FE-1 is designed to be cheap to make, quick to launch, and compatible with multiple existing Army systems. It uses a dual-thrust solid rocket motor, giving it a powerful, fast launch and the long reach. It's been through live-fire demonstrations, warhead testing, and controlled test vehicle launches, all proving its readiness for real-world deployment. Daniel Noland, Aero Vernian's Senior Director of Strategic Capture, explained that the design is threat-driven. He pointed directly to the evolution of Shahed-type drones, which now feature jet propulsion, higher altitudes, and longer ranges. NGCM was developed specifically to counter those types of threats, but also to fill the short-range air defense gap within the Army, the gap between Group 2 drones and subsonic cruise missiles. That short ag gap, short-range air defense, has been one of the U.S. military's biggest vulnerabilities for years. The Freedom Eagle One is a direct response to that problem. Unlike the Coyote, which is powered by a small jet engine, the FE-1 uses a solid fuel rocket motor, meaning faster acceleration, longer reach, and quicker time off the rail. Nolan didn't share classified specifics, but he confirmed that FE-1 flies out farther and higher than the existing interceptors in service today. The missile operates in two phases. It's first guided to its target by ground radar, then it transitions to its own radio frequency seeker to close in. Its 20-pound blast fragmentation warhead is designed for maximum destructive power against fast-moving drones. And unlike hit-to-kill, this approach helps keep costs down. That's a major focus of the program, cost efficiency. The missile's design is intentionally radar agnostic, meaning it can work with a variety of sensors, not just expensive systems like Raytheon's Kuband radio frequency sensor. 
Instead, FE1 is being built to integrate into multiple army architectures, from fixed site LIDs and FAAD C2 to the Integrated Battle Command System, or IBCS. This flexibility allows the Army to mix and match radars and interceptors depending on the mission, making the system more scalable and resilient. The idea, Nolan said, is to be able to accomplish the mission with similar performance using a less costly radar. The FE-1 itself is remarkably affordable for its class, with a target unit cost between $150,000 and $200,000. To put that in perspective, a Stinger missile, which has limited drone killing capability, costs anywhere from $100,000 to $400,000 today. A Block II Coyote costs around $100,000, but with less range and flexibility. Meanwhile, interceptors for the Patriot missile system cost several million dollars each. Even the AIM 9X Sidewinder, used in the Army's new Enduring Shield system, runs about $500,000 per shot. By contrast, the FE-1 delivers high-end capability at a fraction of the cost, and that's critical when the drones it's designed to destroy often cost only tens of thousands of dollars. It simply makes no sense to spend half a million dollars to shoot down a $20,000 target. The Freedom Eagle 1 closes that economic mismatch. This development is part of a much larger shift in U.S. military doctrine. The Army is now aggressively expanding its layered air defense network, adding new systems to protect against everything from small quadcopters to ballistic missiles. By deploying the FE-1 through LIDs and other modular systems, the Army can place these interceptors wherever they're needed most – forward bases, logistics hubs, or even temporary outposts. There's also growing interest from other branches. The U.S. Navy, for example, has already added Coyote launchers to some of its Arleigh Burke-class destroyers. Discussions are underway about the possibility of air launching the FE-1 in the future, though for now, the focus remains on ground-based integration. The Army's long-term vision is clear, a flexible, networked defense grid where sensors and weapons can be mixed, matched, and deployed quickly. The FE-1 fits perfectly into that strategy. It's low-cost, adaptable, and designed to work across multiple systems. As modern warfare continues to evolve with cheap drones, hybrid warfare, and saturation attacks becoming the norm, systems like the Freedom Eagle 1 could be the key to keeping U.S. and allied forces protected. The Freedom Eagle 1 represents more than just another missile. It's a symbol of how the U.S. Army is adapting to the drone age, a weapon born not from theory, but from real-world lessons learned on modern battlefields. From its solid-fuel rocket and flexible radar integration to its low-cost precision and rapid production potential, this missile could mark the next major step in America's counter-drone evolution. And as the skies grow more crowded with threats, it's becoming increasingly clear future wars won't just be fought on land, sea, or space, but in the invisible battles between drones and the interceptors designed to stop them. The Freedom Eagle 1 is that next interceptor, and it's already on the Army's front line.